Hello guys! Today my native city that I often name semi-safe was also targeted by Russian Shahed drones, air defense was working and luckily no one got serious injuries. I will tell you more about this unusual morning later in the video, but mainly I want to focus on the achievement of Ukrainian armed forces who destroyed another air defense system in Belhorod, a very expensive uh, system Panzer S, and Russians constantly boast that this is a very modern air defense capable of stopping HIMARS and ATACAMS. Well, something went wrong again for Russia. And I love this Ukrainian strategy of the destruction of Russian air defense systems close to the front lines. And what is also good, front lines are moving closer to the Kremlin where they actually should be. And this strategy helps us not only protect Ukrainian territories, target Russian military objects, but also prepare Ukraine for the arrival of F-16s, which is very and very expected. And I'm sure the day or the night when they arrive in Ukraine, we will see Kerch Bridge on fire. So let me tell you more about this morning of mine with explosions in my city. A little bit about Kharkiv, an extremely brave city that was once again shelled by crazy Russians, and of course our success in Belgorod. And Belgorod is a war zone in Russia. My name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of the brutal Russian invasion. So if you're new to the channel, you support Ukraine, please subscribe and help us fight against Russian propaganda and fake news. And my longtime friends, check your subscription status and hit notification button. Ukrainian armed forces have managed to deceive Russian air defense system that is claimed to be one of the best, one of the most modern, known as Panzer S. And typically you can hear the ministers, deputy ministers of defense speaking about the invincibility of this air defense system that is capable to stop whatever uh, is targeted on Russia. But somehow, not only it did not stop, it was destroyed it by itself and this is huge you can actually read lots of comments and watch lots of videos because once again russians are not media literate and they share everything online and you can see oh by the way it's interesting russian media hides everything and russian people are sharing everything country to ukraine ukrainian media are not hiding and ukrainians know it's very unsafe to demonstrate the locations that were targeted so anyway uh, we've destroyed the sponsor S and uh, now many of these people around Belgorod say that wow we are super vulnerable who will stop missiles coming from the Ukrainian side and just have a look how tremendously this war has changed but what is also important Ukrainian army only targets military objects like airfields air defense systems ammunition supply uh, for example, um, their oil industry production uh, refineries, depots, because that is used to fuel Russian military machine, both metaphorically and directly. And uh, that's why people of Belgorod should not be afraid of Ukrainians uh, targeting them. Actually, I think we kind of save them when we destroy their air defense systems because it is very, very common for Russian air defense to target and cause more destructions inside Russia than actually Ukrainian drones or Ukrainian missiles. And um, in future, uh, I am sure we will hear more about neutralized Russian air defense systems. Russia does not have enough of them, especially if we take into account how large this country is. Once again, reminding us they don't need new territories. They simply need this war. That's the only way for Putin and his dictator friends like the North Korean ruler to survive. That's why they need wars and conflicts. And if we don't want wars and conflicts, then we don't need Kim and Putin on this planet. If you're new to the channel but you share my opinion, remember to subscribe. This is the easiest but extremely effective way to demonstrate your solidarity and help us spread more information about Ukraine and its democratic allies. So, Belhorod is now um, vulnerable, just as the 
great parts of Russia and we may officially say that many of their regions have already become a war zone, something that seemed totally un uh, unbelievable at the very start of the invasion. But once again, uh, I mean it, uh, the destruction of Russian air defense can actually save more Russian lives because they often target themselves and it seems they've dropped like 80 or maybe already 100 bombs on their own territory because of traditional Russian negligence. What is also very important is to compare the targets that Russian army chooses and Ukrainian army chooses. These are very different approaches and even if you were neutral, you did not know anything about history of our countries, then just knowing on the choice of these targets, you may understand what country you should support and of course it's Ukraine. So once again, we always target military objects and Russia desperately wants to destroy more and more of Ukrainian civilian infrastructure. An attack on Kharkiv was really heavy today, killing people, and there are devastating photos. I share some of uh, Ukrainian media mm, um, photos on Instagram, and it's really heartbreaking because you can literally see beautiful women wearing nice shoes, but not surviving this attack. So she had her Saturday. Uh, tomorrow is Trinity in Ukraine. Uh, people are getting ready to celebrate summer walk. And if Russia is your neighbor, it can be your last walk any moment. And this is actually what I have experienced this morning. And uh, you know that I'm an optimistic person, so I will make you laugh perhaps sharing this story. Well, I like sleeping with my windows open in summer, but also I sleep really tight well. So I rarely hear something, but today in the morning, first, like it was 4 a.m., Russians always attack in this period at dawn when people are super, super uh, vulnerable. So I was like uh, sleeping and then I've heard something like uh, aircraft flying. And this is how optimistic I am. I was thinking these are F-16s flying over my region, which is in the west of Ukraine, and perhaps when finally coming to Ukraine, they will cross uh, the air above my region. And I was thinking, oh, maybe these are F-16s flying in the direction of the Kerch Bridge and we will get news. But then <laughs> people in Lutsk heard um, tractors flying, and you know, whenever you hear a tractor but in the skies that's a shahed drone and a number of explosions and then i went to sleep <laughs> i did not go out like even did not get out of my bed that's a typical behavior unfortunately of many ukrainians after two and a half years of war and then uh, but of course checking your phone checking your facebook you first hear explosions then you read this explosions really happen you will not see photos because we are media literate but i was really glad to learn later that no one i mean from human uh, beings were injured and our air defense stopped them uh, but unfortunately a dog cows and rabbits did not survive this attack and this is an example of what um, what russia is doing like killing cows and dogs uh, but uh, we managed uh, to prevent the attacks and it's very likely that they were uh, targeting the airfield, which happens in many areas of Ukraine. And that might be the reason that Russia tries to uh, spoil uh, the infrastructure for F-16s. But I'm saying it here, even if Russians are watching us, we are much smarter and you will not know where F-16s will be. Believe me, you will not hear it in the news, in the blogs or whatever. And old Soviet empty airfields will not be used. So um, it is what it is to be Ukrainian. And once again, I dream the day when it is safe to visit us comes soon. But at this moment, even my... Uh, to some extent safe city can be dangerous and Ivano-Frankivsk was targeted and there they have destroyed part of the university building. Just compare 
an air defense system or a military supply or an oil refinery in Russia and a university, a village house in Ukraine and a civilian, very big civilian building in Kharkiv. I feel very bad about Kharkiv because this is the city that uh, stole my heart and I hope and I know it will remain brave, strong, beautiful Ukrainian city and after the victory you will be able to discover it too and there are many beautiful things to see. Thank you once again for all the support that I feel on the channel and all the support that we feel in Ukraine. Join me on Instagram, X, Discord and uh, Threads. Also, check our merch shop with lots of really good items that work well as reminders and conversation starters about Ukraine. Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and helping me film and write more. And remember to join me tomorrow for our live 9 p.m. Kyiv time. Slava Ukraini!